shut up compressor. Okay, I've been screwing around with the uh, B-17 long enough. It's time to go ahead and put the P-47 wings together and onto the fuselage. So I've added a few photo etch details to the walls and things like that to give it a little bit more detail. God, these wings just go together like butter. It's amazing. So what I'm going to do is I've been debating whether or not to just put them up to the fuselage and then glue them or not. But I think what I'm going to do is glue the outer edges. because of the way they fit. Thankfully, don't have to go around the curve of the wings. We just have to deal with this area. I can already see I'm going to need to get in here and sand a little bit because it's a little bit rough texture compared to the rest of it. And the bottom has to be bare metal. But we can hit that a little bit. So we've got the outer wings in place there. All right. Now the fun begins. Let's bring the fuselage together. Get up the wings. You know what? After looking at that, I think it actually makes sense to close them here because we can get a better grip on things. And we've got wings on. Hoorah. Okay, so let's do a quick catch up on the state of all things jug. So, currently making my way through the assembly process. I have the wings on. The join is pretty good, but it's going to require cleanup in a few spots, like where I got some nice uh, weld beading right there. And on the underside, I've got the gear bays together a little bit weathered up they'll get more over time again not too much more because the M was uh, of all the jugs probably the most babied of the jugs and again wasn't in service all that long still uh, you know the gear base do need a little bit more weathering than this I think also installed the port flap and one thing that still has to be done is to deal with this inner flap actuator, which to me would actually have you install when you're building the flap and basically trap it between the two halves. Um, that was not working for me because this little square part here is basically supposed to be just a metal plate that sits on the wing and kind of hinges so it sits flush when the wing is, or sorry, when the flap is up like it is here. Come on. And this part just does not do that the way it's, um, basically the way it's engineered. 
So what needs to happen here is this actuator piece needs to sit recessed a bit inside the flap there. And that should hopefully get all this stuff to align and fit and everybody will be happy. But we are not currently <laughs> at that place. So there's gonna be a little bit of surgery on this, probably a little bit of grinding to get it uh, reduced a bit. I might try to come in here and if you see there's that little piece right there that sticks up a bit proud, I might see if I can find a way to remove that. Uh, probably should have done that before I built the thing and glued it in. So I can make up for time on the other side, but for this one, that's something that's gonna need to be addressed. Otherwise, everything's going pretty well with this. Uh, just a bit of cleanup here and there, a bit of cleanup on like the, the gun fairings, the leading edges of the wings, just typical assembly bullshit. And before too long, we're gonna be starting to do final cleanup and prime. Other stuff I've got going on with this, let me set that guy aside. The cowl is in a pretty decent place. Uh, it's got the trademark 56 fighter group red ring up front here, courtesy of some Gunge GX3. Cowl interior, I uh, got some K-Colors love with the lovely K-Colors 15 aluminum. It does need a little bit of cleanup, if you can see. It's probably easier to see here from the inside. So when I went and masked off the inside to paint the red, I secured it with um, some liquid frisket. And I don't know, something was weird in here when I sprayed the interior of this with the GX2. Uh, I don't know what exactly happened, but it made the K colors go down a bit weird around the cowl. And so a lot of that stuff lifted. So I'm probably gonna need to come in here and do a little bit of cleanup, not too much, because again, the inside of these things got filthy fast with all the oil that R2800s would spray around like a damn sprinkler. So that's probably up soon. Uh, also need to mask off the red and paint the bottom part of the cowl here, basically after this brake line, everything underneath that is bare metal. Everything on top of it is flat black. And then the camouflage picks up at the cowl flaps. So that's coming soon. Went ahead and built the tail wheel assembly. Need to clean that up a little bit and paint it. For the R2800, this is a uh, rather disappointing engine coming from 132nd scale. So let's see what we got here. Doo -doo -doo. At least it's two parts and it's not some weird relief bullshit, but it's still not ideal. Then again, it is 148th. So I've gone ahead and drilled out the spark plugs in the cylinders. So we'll be running the ignition lines to those. The fun thing about this engine is even though it's got a pretty nice crankcase cover, it has no ignition ring at all of any kind. So the one with the more rounded crankcase cover for the other R2800s does hint at it, but this one, the more sort of <clears throat> bolted as opposed to cast crank cover has nothing. So I'm gonna be using an Edwards set that has the ignition wires, basically use it for the ring, slice the ignition wires off and replace them with lead wire and run that to where it needs to go. So at least I'm not drilling a bunch of little holes around this and trying to fake some bullshit. Uh, other than that, this will be a pretty straightforward engine to deal with, I think. Here's a uh, flap assembly that is not yet assembled, so this will be coming soon. There's that piece that is kind of sticking up. It might cause problems for the other side. I'm going to see if I can get rid of that without causing massive problems. I mean, fortunately, that's very deep up under the wing, so I think if I can get in there, I might be able to do something with it. And then let's see what else is going on. I guess, main gear struts. So these things, uh, on the one hand, they are better in 148 scale than the trumpeter ones are in 132nd scale. They also actually fit really, really well into the wings. I forgot how nice these things slot in. It's literally plug and you're done. 
However, they do have, as you can see here, some ejector pin marks right here, right here, right here, and right here that need to be cleaned up. I've also got an Edwards set that was kind enough to include some replacement oleo scissors that look pretty nice and they look nice and thin because they're photo etched and all that and they basically will be going right here so I have filled these holes and once I get them filled then I can go ahead and get that thing installed so that's basically where we're at with the jug and now let's uh, let's get some stuff going okay so I've been working on the P47M crankcase cover and it's been painted neutral gray, MRP. And now it is getting the decals for the data plate and the Pratt & Whitney logo, which as you can see will go basically on the bottom of the cover. And I'm a little bit concerned because A, the Pratt & Whitney logo is a Tamiya decal. <laughs> so those are always fun to contend with. And it is not in the best condition and it actually broke apart as I was putting it on there so we're just gonna let that sit for a little while now my plan for this granted I want to respect it being a relatively new engine so the crankcase cover isn't gonna be all beat the shit but I do want to come in here and add some of that uh, probably that ammo steel color to the some of the bolts in here and I want to dirty it up because it's an R2800. They deserve to be dirty. I think my next mission is going to be to go ahead and clean up the prop a little bit better. So, had a little bit of extra primer in the cup last night when I was priming the crankcase cover. Sprayed three of the blades, but as you can see, the actual spinner here in the middle needs a little bit of help. And I think some of these edges probably need cleaning up as well. Now my preferred method of attack for these is scraping with an X-Acto blade because you can get in really tight. Without really harming much detail. Just like that. One of the annoying, the, one of the annoying things about this prop is it's hard to see now because I've kind of erased the evidence. But to me, I literally had a raised lines molded into the prop here for where to paint the yellow, which I guess is hopeful if you don't really have a clue what you're doing the spinner is also one of those areas where it is murderously difficult to get a sanding stick or anything like that in here to clean up so this little blade is really a lifesaver in situations like this okay so those are all cleaned up. Now we need to look at where on the, yep, there's one right there. So on the edges of the props here, we've got mold seams. Which, I mean, I understand it's part of the process. It's annoying. Thankfully, they stick them right on the edge, so they're pretty easy just to swipe away. The idea is to do it without really hurting too much the profile of the prop. Okay, I think we're good. Let's check in real fast on how this decal affair is coming along. Not too bad. So I'm going to add a little bit more
Mr. Mark Setter to that. Let it kind of do its thing. All right, in the meantime, I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab the actual jug and we're gonna do a bit of cleanup on it.